Jordan Moore, Keely Yor, Max Brown, and the new head coach for USC men's and women's swimming. It's Lee Mauer. Uh, she joins us now. Welcome, officially. Uh, I know you've been here for a while. You had the interim job, and now you step up and are you know were officially named uh, you know just a few days ago. What what did that mean to you? And 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 where do you go from here? It was really meaningful to be announced as the head coach, men's and women's swimming. Um, a female. That's kind of rare and um, exciting. I think one thing I'm most proud of is, you know, one, my staff and the student athletes were incredible this year. We really um, kind of embraced the idea of taking it one day at a time and leaving this program better than we found it. And if it was short term, it was short term. And if it was long term, so be it. Um, so I was really happy that it paid off because I think it's, it was a really exciting year and a meaningful effort and a collective effort. And so um, I'm excited to be able to continue the relationship because that was the hardest piece of the puzzle was to get them to embrace in the recipe that I was working with and, and working and trusting in the coaches. You know, obviously athletics, you have to build a really strong relationship with the athletes and it's an us proposition. And every time I felt as if we were getting to a crossroads, there was a retraction because are you going to be here? And yeah. and we just had to keep inviting them to stay with it because even if it wasn't, it was still meaningful to kind of con commit to the action. So um, it was really nice to have a payoff and to be able to continue the process with the athletes that are here and, and the ones that have committed to coming here next year. In that sense, how do you expect your role to evolve now that you've dropped that interim tag? <laughs> I know it's a, it's a no. Big I mean, I just had an interview today, and they said they came to USC a few years ago, and um, it was a Saturday workout, and they went to the beach, and they said, "If we come to your Saturday practice, are we going to go to the beach?" And I said, "No." <laughs> 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 so we can go to the beach after practice. Um, so I think one thing that it means is, um, you know, we are committed. Um, I talked to them about the team effort. Um, team is going to be paramount. Uh, two stories. Um, I'm very relationship based and swimming's a pretty grim sport. So um, you have to find a way to have fun 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after and in the middle of some grueling workouts. Um, and then three character. Character is a huge piece of my puzzle. Um, I was really proud of our areas were clean. Um, the workers at Georgia Tech became massive Trojan fans. They were giving everyone the fight on. So <laughs> that's important to me. And um, I, I hope that that's going to be something that is our trademark moving forward. When I saw the announcement, I saw men's and women's. I was like, that's two different programs. Is that normal in the swimming world or uh, what's going on there? You're talking to a football guy. <laughs> um, I think it's becoming more common. It's it's a mixed review on um, how that works effectively. I think actually my rapport with the men maybe was something that um, was – um, exciting for the administration. Um, I have two boys um, in my former job. The baseball coach would see me working and he said, God right, got it right, giving you boys um, for <laughs> children. Um, so I think, you know, there's challenges to both genders. I think I'm familiar with both of them. I used to coach high school and I was fortunate to coach Mac Reavers, who's an Olympian. Um, so I think I, I know um, kind of how to how to motivate them differently, how to work with them differently, um, and then also how to work with them collectively. So I'm excited, and both of them have have some massive gifts and some some big challenges, but um, it's fun. Yeah, we had it here in the track and field side. You know, Carol Smith Gilbert was here uh, the last few years, won won two national championships, and and she would always talk about was pretty openly about. You have to treat them differently. I mean, men and women sort of respond to different types of coaching. Is that your experience as well? And and what what are the differences? Um, I don't know if it's respond differently. I think some different challenges in terms of um, honest. You know, honesty is important, and how that presents differently. I think um, sometimes. Um, the men have a lot of bravado and, and they're, um, put me in coach, I'm ready. And then subtly you get glimpses that maybe you need to unpack that a little bit with them um, and make sure that what they're saying is in line with what they're feeling. And then women, I think it is just a little different where, um, you know, uh, with women, I think one thing is they come and they have a, a point and you may hear them but disagree with them and and you have to kind of be able to w walk that line in terms of I hear you I just didn't agree with you where they might expect 
Um, you didn't hear me because you're not doing what I really <laughs> asked you to do. <laughs> so let me repeat it. And so we go around a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> now, you yourself are an Olympic gold medalist. What learning lessons did you take from such a, a great experience as that? Um, I actually am shocked because... I am a person, I did win an Olympic gold medal. I won a bronze medal and I got fourth at the Olympics. And I'm actually maybe the only human being who got fourth at the Olympics who's reasonably proud of that. <laughs> um, also, I just missed making the Olympic team. I got third um, in my last effort to make um, the Olympic team. And I love watching the Olympics. Name an event, I watch it religiously. And I thought all Olympians enjoyed watching it. And <laughs> there were very few Olympians, even gold medalists, who enjoy watching it. Um, so one thing I'm really proud of is that I loved kind of the process of pursuing goals. And, um, you know, when I got third, there were so many people who said, oh, like, do you regret it? Do you, you know, three years of your life just down the toilet and... You know, those are terrible voices, but I never felt that way. I would rather get third and know that I missed and um, and so be it. And I move on in life. And um, and I was proud of everything I did going up. There was no regret. So I love that I'm in the sport where if it's only for the carrot, it is um, really hard to kind of really go on and, and be proud of what you worked for and what you did and, and the friendships and all of that. So I'm really proud of my rubric. I'm really trying to encourage former athletes that are my peers to go back to the Olympics and remind them of what an amazing experience it is and how it's so much bigger than whether you got a medal. So um, I think, you know, just staying where your feet are and um, and really loving the process and being proud of giving 100%. Um, I'm really grounded in that. The best position coaches I had here were ones that played my position because I felt like they could talk the talk, they could relate to being in the heat of battle, so to speak. With the accomplished career you had as a swimmer, how do you take that into both your coaching style and then maybe also the way you recruit as well? Um, I think the one thing that everyone will say, and I don't know if it's coming across, but um, I'm always shocked at people commenting on my intensity on the deck or in the moment. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the NC2As, but it makes mortals out of superhuman people. Um, and it's probably something like the Super Bowl or the college playoffs, right? There's a reason why people start looking like they're playing football without hands. Um, and so I think one thing I bring to recruiting is letting them know that I am really committed to them as people. Um, I really encourage, one thing I love about USC is just the balance of academics and athletics, and then also the space for um, some pretty exciting things to do. And there's time to do some fun things. So recharging, which I think in this day and age, it's so hard to have your pedal down on school and swimming. You need to try and find some time to just reset a little bit. And then also um, just having a really good five-year plan. I want to send athletes that are going to go on and be amazing um, employees and um, be able to work really well in environments and, and take feedback from their bosses and just go on to whatever institution they're going to go into and be um, great team players and, and productive members of that organization. So um, I think people see that I have a lot of legs on my table and it's a 360 degree effort to make you a better person, a better athlete and prepare you for what's next. And you mentioned what a grind the sport is just in general i mean you called it grim earlier it's it is grind it's often early workouts it's often long workouts what are the attributes outside of being an incredible physical specimen as, as we've all sort of seen <laughs> in the olympics of a great swimmer i when i graduated college i went to a dinner and they had they asked me to qualify and i said you know you wake up at 5 30 in the morning and you dive into a cold pool and it ends up being the best two hours of your day, if not your life. So the attributes of a swimmer, I think, are people that um, can, I think maybe you have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be able to, um, you know, laugh. I think um, you have to have a great work ethic. And I think you, 
um, have to embrace that there's never going to be the perfect race. You know, there's whether it's Michael Phelps, there's always more um, that that you can improve upon. And my husband, I married a swimmer, um, which he vowed never to date a swimmer, and he dated <laughs> one and married me, and he's probably regretting that a few times over. But um, I am probably frustrating because I continue, I thrive on that, where, like, what is the incremental way that we're going to improve? And I was joking with him because I do carry that over to my family and – and he said, you know, I did think you would mellow with age, Lee. You know, so um, I think you have to um, have a personality where that is encouraging and not daunting, that there's always space to get better and always uh, an answer for how to improve. Um, it's not going to be as satisfying as a win-loss. You know, if we could win NC2As and there's going to be some individuals that are disappointed with their time. So it's a little less forgiving in that, but it is always encouraging because there's always a tomorrow and there's always a way to get better. All right. Appreciate it. Good getting to know you. Congratulations on the job and look forward to uh, many years of success here at USC with the men's and women's swim program. That is Lee Mauer. Our football roundtable is next on Trojans Live.